everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here we have a 100% merino wool bat from Woolery. And today we are going to try to dye it uh, for our sponsor Jody. Believe it or not, this bat is 200 grams and it arrived in this small plastic bag. Uh, but when I removed it, it has fluffed up a lot. I have it folded up on this table. It's probably about four times as large as this table. So I think I'm gonna need to prepare a rather large work surface so we can dye it. I have spun from bats before, but I have never tried dyeing one. Most of what I dye is roving or combed top, and the fibers are all headed in the same direction. Here, there's a bit less order. It's still extremely spinnable, but the fibers are a little more random. And so I anticipate that that means that there could be more of a felting risk this time than if I was just using roving. So I'm not sure the best way to go about this. I definitely want to hand paint it followed by steaming, but I'm not sure if I go and pre-soak it if I will be able to unfold it back into its flat shape easily, or if I should have it on the counter and try applying the dye directly to it. So maybe before I pre-soak, we should try going and pouring a little water on it to get a sense of how absorbent the fiber is, because that could uh, help us see how to treat it. I think that when I was unpacking this, I was expecting something the size of this table. It is a lot larger than I thought, but this means we have a really large canvas. And so we could try to create some kind of message or picture. Uh, the ideas are swirling around in my head and I am really, really excited to dye this for Jody. If you wanna learn more about this bat or anything else that I'm using today, you can find links and some affiliate links in the video description. The bat is folded in half and we are using my entire counter. Um, I am actually really, really excited. One of the big things that I'm gonna consider a test while dyeing this bat is at the end, can I still separate it as easily as I can now? When our sponsor Jody reached out to me with this idea, she said she understood that felting is a risk, but I think if I handle it really, really gently, then things should be fine. <laughs> now, obviously, I have not pre-soaked this yet, and the first little test I wanna do is I wanna take a little bit of water and just put it on the bat and see if it is gonna sink in or just bead on top. The nice thing, and I'm not sure if you can see, it is sort of beating on top, but I am able to gently press it in. I'm curious how far down, okay, that went through pretty much the first layer. Let's see if I press, and I wanna be very careful and just press and not rub. Let's see if it goes down. Okay, we are starting to go through, um, therefore, I think I'm not going to pre-soak this. I'm going to mix vinegar in with my dyes and then apply it to the bat like that. Um, and I think that we can have fun um, maybe using this baster, create some kind of design on top, and then come through, press it in, and add more and more dye. And then if we need to, uh, we'll see how wet it is, if I'd be able to flip this over easily or not. But in each of these bowls, I have one cup of water with one half tablespoon of white vinegar. I am gonna use food coloring for the dyeing today because I don't know yet if I want to set the color in the microwave or in a steam pot. I think it depends on how compact this is as I roll it up. Today, I'm gonna to use my favorite food coloring, which is the Wilton Colorite Color Performance System. Uh, these are really concentrated liquid food coloring drops and the colors that I have planned today for sort of like a sky sunset kind of feel actually are all primaries. 
The pink is just red number three. The crimson is just red number 40. Orange is yellow number six. Blue is blue number one, and yellow is yellow number five. And again, remember these colors can be really, really concentrated. So I think I'm gonna start, I don't want quite as much blue. Maybe I'll start with three drops of the blue. Let's do, whoop, well, that was a lot. Maybe 10 or 11 drops of the pink. Crimson is more saturated. Let's just do two drops there. The orange. Six drops. I can always supplement. And eight drops of the yellow. And now I'm gonna go stir all these up. I can sort of tell that some of the red might have crashed out over here. Is what it is. Um, I think of them, the blue is actually really potent and I think that that's the color I sort of wanna use the least of. I wanna mainly focus on these really warm tones and just have some pops of that blue in there. Um, and some of them have sunk all the way through, which is great, but I think I'm gonna just start painting. As needed, I can always add more color on, but let's sort of see what happens. I wonder how long it might take this to sink in. Um, certainly on the areas where it's already wet. Interesting, let me add bit more there and I'm curious if without me doing anything else if that will sink all the way through and yes so as things are getting wet the color is sinking all the way through that is great of course there's a lot less color on that side than there is on this first side but yeah we're gonna go with this and have some fun Oof, I like that pink. It looks more red until it's really starting to sink through. And I'm really curious to see how this might spread on these lower levels. I do also want to take some care. Um, and the reason why I'm going, let's just sort of help this a little bit, going for a little less saturated colors overall is that I want, ooh, maybe that all just sort of went through. Um, well, not yet, but some of it's starting to go through. Okay, one of the reasons why I am going for some slightly less saturated colors overall is that I want to uh, make sure that there's not a ton of rinsing in the end because that's another step that concerns me but it's fun to see how much pinker it gets as it's soaking through and the red whoop see I'm adding drops interesting I have no idea how much coverage I'm gonna get on here um, five cups of liquid felt like a lot oh good Oh good, we are getting some good color on the other side. Okay, let's let's carry on. Ooh, you know what? I just got an idea. I think I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna add all these colors on and then we can add more water if needed and maybe they might spread out some into some more pastel areas. That could be really, really cool. Um, five cups of water feels like a lot, but let's Let's focus on adding these colors in areas and then we can add more water as we need to. I am using a turkey baster to apply the color. This is just one I picked up at my grocery store. It was about a dollar and it actually is doing a great job of applying color overall. I wonder if it'll be good for some low immersion and heat situations later on. The one thing I really needed to be careful about is checking the edge of the bat. 
I did discover a leak where some of the water was leaking out the edge, but I was able to soak that back up and so it wasn't really that big of a deal. I wanted to go really, really lightly with the blue. I didn't really want this to be a rainbow bat, but I wanted some hints, maybe some hints of sky, some hints of green in here. I'm not sure if the blue will go all the way through to the other layer or not, but I do think that it adds some really nice contrast to these colors that I've already added on top. We've got this really cool base laid out. There's like, it feels sort of like a Jackson Pollock sunset almost. I mean, I'm not trying to give myself that much credit, but <laughs> that's sort of like it's what it reminds me of. Got this base done. I added into a squeeze bottle one drop of the yellow food coloring, a lot of water, and a huge splash of vinegar. There's probably almost 500 milliliters of liquid in here. And I am going to start spraying. So the amount of pigment in here is pretty minimal, but I sort of want to make everything a bit more wet. Um, and so maybe I should have done this at the beginning, but in some areas, this is helping some of those colors go in, and I'm not seeing a ton of spreading, but I am seeing a little bit. So I am going to continue and sort of get the whole surface damp now. light layer of yellow isn't going to make a huge difference in the color overall but I think it could be fun if there is um, and there is a bunch of white on the other side I need to see think about trying to flip this Ooh, this is kind of fun look what's happening now as I'm pressing now that we've got more liquid in here overall Gosh, I really hope I don't felt this. Each time I touch it, it's making me so nervous. Um, but we've got a lot of liquid in here now. And I know that texture-wise, there's some areas that are really saturated. So that is creating sort of this different look. But, oh, this is fun. I'm not sure if I can easily flip this or not. Hmm. But I do want to show you, this is sort of what we've got on the underside right now. And some of these areas are so, so cool looking. Uh, I'm really debating what I should do. Like if I want to try to spray um, the underside and then roll it up and sort of squeeze it uh, to help some of those colors penetrate. Yeah, maybe that's what I should do. There'll still be some areas in the center that will maintain some white, but you know, I think that Oh dear. Okay, let's start with this section. There'll still be some dry pockets. I expect the final yarn might be rather pastel. And there'll be some differences, especially as I go and get more liquid. But look at the way these colors have just blended on the side. I think it is really, really gorgeous. So the colors, you can barely see on camera the difference that spraying it is making, but I promise that there is a tiny amount of pigment, which, I mean, there's still going to be white in that center because there's areas that are less dry, there's going to be some dry pockets. See if I can. Oh good. 
Okay, so that's that center area done. We still have this end to do. Let's wrap up this end. I'm probably gonna need to make more of my spray mixture. Yeah, but this should help some colors spread into these drier areas. And honestly, it's giving a lot more vinegar. I know that I'm really making this up as I go along, but it's sort of like I had a plan and then I modified my plan and then I modified it again. So that's sort of just how these things work over here at Chemnitz. Um, and there you can see some fibers stuck a little bit. I need to be really careful. I might almost make it with the amount that I mixed up. I mean, this is a lot of liquid that's in here. Okay, I'm gonna mix up a tiny bit more. But this whole side kind of has less pigment overall. But yeah, I think that this additional uh, saturation hopefully will help. I have no idea how I'm going to wash this. This is, I have to say, this is unbelievably nerve wracking. Um, but I hope, again, I hope that this is going to feel sort of sunset y. I'm just spraying on, I figure, a little more. Vinegar won't hurt. How on earth am I gonna wash this? Very, very carefully. I will say I rather enjoyed using this baster uh, to, uh, and we had some leaks. Uh, I really enjoyed using this basting brush to help apply color to our fiber. First, I am folding up the sides and then Hmm. Shoot. I guess I didn't think about this. Because this is going to be too deep. So I guess I'm going to need to fold this up. Fold this up a little bit. Um, fold these ends in before I wrap it up. And hopefully things won't get too stuck. Ooh, but look at those colors move now as I can press. Because now when I press, I don't think I'm going to be, um, like, messing it. But I hope we've got our beautiful, beautiful sunset in the, in the end. So hopefully this jelly roll will fit inside a pasta insert. Fingers crossed and oh folly. Um, let's see, can I shift it? Sort of? Okay, I'll be able to fit a lid on, I think. Oh goodness. The fiber is in my steamer basket and let's see. Thank goodness I can fit the lid on. Um, because we want that steam to stay in there. I want to steam this for a while. Normally I might steam things for 20 to 30 minutes, but I want to make sure that the color is set because again, I really, really, really don't want to have to do a lot of washing. Um, I really want, uh, <laughs> I really want all of this to sort of set and then like heavy washing can happen after the yarn has been spun where the felting risk is not as great. And even though I just turned on the heat, we're already seeing some good steam in here. So let's cross your fingers for me and I'll be back in about an hour. All right, after steaming for about an hour, or a little over an hour, it's very, very hot. I am going to turn off the heat on this pot 
and let it cool down until our bat is at completely room temperature. Even if I wait until tomorrow, I am not touching this while it's warm. Uh-uh-uh. After about a day, um, we are completely room temperature and ready to go wash it. I did want to show that there is some color bleeding. Some color did sort of come out of here. And what I think is exciting is you can see the colors did spread on the yarn just by looking at this. So I am really, really excited to go and take a closer look at it. Rather than using one of the plastic basins I use most frequently, I am filling up my sink. That way I can have a lot of water and do a very gentle rinse. You can see towards the bottom that the colors did pool. So as this was sitting in the pot, they did sink down, giving us a more saturated area on one side. But let's see about opening this up. So we did fold this over um, a few times. Oh, I don't really want the water to run on it, but I am trying to open this up really, really gently in here. Probably should have had the, oh, the other side down first. I really, really don't want to agitate or felt it. You can see on the plastic wrap there is some color left. Now, I'm not sure if that is color that was trapped between some folds or what, but we do have the whole bat full immersion right now. Um, and I am oh so gently moving it. I have to decide how I'm going to rinse it. So right now, just from having it soak in this water, I am not seeing bleeding. And I don't see like little bits of color coming off. And if I fill a white cup with water, I am not seeing any pigment there. Um, I could go and try to do multiple rinses and wash with soap. I am not going to do that. I do not want to rinse this with soap. I don't want to risk moving and felting anything. And now I'm trying to consider how I'm going to get this out. <laughs> uh, how I'm going to gently remove this and whether or not I should put this in my spin dryer. I think I probably should. I brought the spin dryer right next to my sink so that way I'm going to try to gently Oh dear. Lift our back up. I'm going to throw that water drain away and come over and put it in directly. And you can see just from moving, um, some of the fiber did stick to my hand, but I'm trying to be optimistic. I hope I don't regret this step, but I do believe that this will make it easier for me to hang up the fiber to dry. There we go. We are a bit more balanced, and hopefully I don't overfill the rinse basin, but that water, like there's not a ton of color coming out in the water, which is a really, really good sign. Um, so I'm gonna let our fiber hang out in here for, I think maybe two minutes, and then I will come take it out. I should probably add that um, Laundry Alternative sent me the spin dryer for free, um, but after my initial review, I have been testing out and using it a lot. And where I especially love it has been with fiber. And let's pull this out. And oof, hopefully it's not broken, but you can see, I think, that the fiber looks fluffy and pretty. There's definitely a little bit of fiber stuck to the inside of the walls, but I'm gonna go show you the bat on my drying rack. I'm, I'm impressed. Here is the bat on my drying rack, and once it's dry, we'll come take a look and see if I can open it up even more. 
The one error is that we've got these uh, holes somehow that came through um, from one point of the process, but you can still see some of my original pattern and the colors did spread beautifully. And this hole is actually a little helpful because we can see for color penetration, some places don't have as much color penetration, whereas other places have more, which means that there's going to be some white in it, um, bringing in some pastel, but I'm pretty excited. I do wish that I had a little bit more of a vision of something to paint on this, but I really didn't know how the fibers would react to the whole process. So I really wanted to go for it and see. But now I'm not gonna touch it anymore and we're just gonna leave it here and let it dry. Jody's bat is still a very, very fluffy cloud and we can very easily open it up. It is not felted. But look at the surprise on the inside. So with the combination of squirting and spraying, we got pretty shallow penetration. Um, there's some areas that have some deeper color sections, but we've got these colors mixed in with the white and I think it'll give like really pretty pastel, wispy sunset with clouds. Let me flip it over and on, I think this is the side on the counter and so we see less of the like overall swirls, but we do see some areas where we saw pooling of some of the colors in a really fun way. I'm not sure again where these holes came from, maybe from the spin dryer, because I wasn't aware of going all the way through, so something must have tugged through when it was in there, but I am so happy that this is so fluffy and spinnable. Was I extraordinarily careful when I was dyeing this? Yes, um, it is large and I was really, really afraid of felting it um, because it is so fluffy and the fibers are already going in all different directions, which means that felting could be a little easier. Now, that's not to say that if I were to dye it bad again, that I would still be this careful. I think now that I know what works well and what doesn't, I think that the way I would do this next time is I would start off with the blank, the dry blank on the counter, and I would spray it with water and vinegar to get it nice and saturated. I wouldn't want to immersion pre-soak it um, unless I was going to do an immersion technique on the stovetop or something, but if I was going to hand paint, I would spray it with water first to get it wet and then apply the dye so we could have the dyes spread out a bit further. I would still probably hold back on the dye a little bit because I'd be concerned about having to do a lot of washing and rinsing, but my goal was to get something that felt sunset -y, and I think that I achieved that. Um, there's some hints of that blue and green. Um, I didn't quite get, I mean, I was sort of hoping to like add the color in like waves in some kind of way, and things spread out a lot, which I think is also really, really cool. Yeah, in general, when I'm doing a new project, I don't worry a ton about felting. I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. And I definitely held back this time. I wanted to touch this as little as possible. But I am really thrilled to see just how fluffy and large. I mean, look at this like pillow of fiber here. Um, I'm so thrilled that it turned out as fluffy as it did even when it got so compressed from just being wet. And so that gives me confidence going forward. Jody, thank you so, so much again for sponsoring this video. Um, I am really happy that you came to me with this suggestion and that we were able to make it work. If you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Sponsors get one or 200 grams of fiber, uh, depending on what they select, dyed in a video designed with them in mind. I pick the colors and the technique, and you give me a little information about colors to avoid, and maybe even some fun suggestions. Sponsors can select from um, some of my most commonly used yarn bases, but if there's something in particular that you would like to see uh, if I could incorporate into a video, uh, reach out to me through direct message and we can talk about it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. 
Uh, new episodes always come out on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but there's a lot of other fun bonus videos along the way, and you don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching.